Oh, <clears throat> all right, everyone. Welcome back. We are going to be jumping on Eldrazi Tron today. Um, there's a deck that recently took first place in events. So I want to try out their list. So I used to play Eldrazi Tron quite a bit when it first came back to Modern. It was the deck that I uh, jumped on after building Valakut. I played this for like a year. Um, so I'm taking a look at the differences in their list. Uh, so the things that almost never change that you'll see will be the four Eldrazi Temples, the four Mines, and the four Power Plants, and the four Towers. After that, you'll see some flexing of slots. Um, the cards that I usually will see people play is the Ghost Quarters here, usually two to three on those. Um, the Seagate Records has been a pretty popular uh, inclusion as well. Um, I've seen people go... Um, there's always like one Caverns in there, but I've seen people go up on that. I have actually at one point ran like two or three as well. Um... The two of the Spear Dragon is pretty sweet. Seems like a nice inclusion here. Um, an efficient way for us to gain life against, you know, decks other than just relying on the Basilisk Collar. And the Worm Coil Engine, which we can't always reliably drop. Um, and then after that, we got a couple basic ways. Um, the Collar, the four Expedition Maps, those are pretty solid. Um, my version did not run the Spirit Guides, okay? So that's new for me. You can be testing that out. I, I like it a lot because I do like the fact that we run, you know, the Chalices here. Um, the four Matters, four Thought Knots, four Smashers, those were pretty common. The Worm Coils and the Karns here that you see, they're both out of one of. I've seen a lot of lifts uh, mess with those numbers quite a bit. If it's a straight Eldrazi version, we'll usually see more Endbringers, uh, but two is pretty much where I see people start at the minimum. Um, the All is Dust here as well as our Board Sweeper. Uh, great card since it doesn't hit any of our permanents. Uh, four Chalice, four Ballistas, and an Ulamog. So over into the sideboard here. We have two Contortions, two Warping Wheels, another Caverns here, um, two Graph Diggers, a Pithic Needle, Relic, two Ratchet Bombs, Spell Sky, Crucible, Ugin, and Emrakul. Um, so one of the downsides to playing this like, colorless list is you're limited on the um, cards you can run, but usually you're, you're still pretty much fine. Uh, we're able to hit a lot of different things through artifacts and through colorless spells. So let's jump into a league and see how it does. The deck should be <coughs> updated for you guys as well as anyone watching live. So we got two Tron pieces, and we've got a turn one chalice here, so I think I'm going to go ahead and keep this. Um, my usual rules that have been passed on to me when it comes to uh, hands you keep on Eldrazi Tron is if you're pushing forth one of the unfair things, you should do it. Um, if you're not, then you need to ship the hand. So those unfair things is like running out of chalice on one, getting your um, Tron pieces, or getting temple so you can rush out your Eldrazi. If you're not doing one of those things, you're really in a bad spot because you're going to get punished pretty badly. So... Uh, because you're not you're not doing anything oppressive to stop them from doing their game plan. So then, um, by as a result, you're going to be in a pretty bad spot. Uh, looks like our opponent cracked a land. I mean, cracked their scalding turn and dropped an op here. Pretty good for us. Um, looks like they might be on Phoenix and a turn one chalice is pretty sweet. Let's uh, run out another chalice here just in case. We got a third one here, so we'll probably throw that one on two um looks like they're gonna concede sweet <laughs> uh, all the power all right so i want to bring in graph diggers cage here and uh relic as well um i don't think we really need the other stuff warping whale is also a consideration here it can hit their thing in the ice and it will also uh, stop their uh, sorcery spells um uh, we may want Ratchet Bomb. It would be one of our ways to deal with the 
Blood Moon that I'm expecting them to play on us. So, let's take a look at these cards then. Um, I want to get rid of the cards that aren't going to be impacting too much. I want to get rid of the Ballistas here. Ballistas are fine to an extent, but I don't really think we're in that kind of game plan. We don't need the Ulamog either. Um, and I'm going to ship the Karn here. And I think we're going to just trim a matter reshaper. A lot of times, you know, we, we're going to be throwing that out. You want to bring in the Warping Whales as well? Yeah, yeah. Yep, so we got the Warping Whales and we got the Ratchet Bomb. So thanks for joining us, Reese. Um, so I'm thinking about doing that right there. Taking out the Ballistas, the Ulamog, the Karn, and the Reshaper. Bringing in both Warping Whales, both Ratchet Bombs, the Graph Diggers, and the Relics here. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. God, Reese. Not just Reese. So, I, let's run it this way. Um, another consideration, I guess, would be bringing in the caverns here. Um, and we can trim a ghost corner. It doesn't really impact us. And uh, in case they want to bring in any obscure counter spells. Oh, God, Reese or Poppy. It feels pretty weird to call you Poppy. I'm just saying. And I have the uh, deck posted on Stream Decker, and you can see it on the deck list, uh, Reese, if you need it. I mean, God, Reese. That's a fair point, leaving in our ghost quarters so we can hit our own land in case we uh, need to have colorless mana. Yeah, this deck doesn't run the Mind Stones either that I have seen quite a bit and I used to play around with as well. Helps us make sure we got our colorless mana. So um, we'll see where we're at with it see if they want to do all that fun stuff. All right, so we've got a turn two thought knot here, so this is pretty sweet. Let's go ahead and keep this. We'll run out the expedition map on turn one with that temple, and then we'll uh, plan on sending the spirit guiding in the thought knot. Let's see if that will uh, crush our opponent. Ooh, a Grafter's Cage is pretty sweet as well. Let's go ahead and run that out, actually. Ship it over. Yeah, I've actually never seen two in the Spirit Dragon either, so it's, it was a very interesting uh, card for me. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and run out the Thought Knot. See what they got going on. Phoenix Bolt Op Manamorphos and Shatterstorm. Hmm. If we take the Phoenix. Well, they don't really have that much mana. Opt and Bolt are kind of annoying us here. Yeah, I'm leaning towards the Mana Morphos here, making them work harder to get that thing in the ice flipped. And then hopefully um, they're going to have to work harder to get that Shatterstorm resolve to get the Phoenix out. So let's snag that. And then we'll pass it over. We don't draw anything relevant we'll probably just plan on running out the expedition map and then we can crack it for another temple or a caverns or just a uh, basic waste so we can uh, run out the smasher here depending on what they have going on you think manamorphos would be banned before faithful slitting 
I still think Faithless looting itself is the issue, not not Manamorphos. Alright, we got an opt. What's your thoughts on why it should be uh why it should be Manamorphos being banned and not uh Faithless? Okay, well they didn't hit their land, which is good for us. Next turn is very likely they're gonna flip that thing in the ice. We drew Ratchet Bomb, so we may want to run out the Ratchet Bomb because then we can um, get rid of that thing in the ice easier. We can run out Ratchet Bomb and Expedition Map. Crack for four. the blood moon <clears throat> so we can fetch up our basic waste with expedition map, which will be good for us. Um, if they get a land here, they do get to shatterstorm us, which will be pretty bad. Okay. And. have to block so they're gonna lose their thing in the ice all right so faithless uh, being banned kills some decks where manamorphos is free card advantage which is never good plus banning uh, that would just wouldn't kill the deck to slow it down and doesn't kill other decks So like one of the biggest stopping points though I think with the faithless uh, banning is that it it enables the two strongest decks in the format right now, which is fine honestly. I don't I don't see any bans happening at all until after Horizons. Um, there's just too much going on right now for them to do something like that. But I think we'll have to see how the format plays out after Horizons and the London Mulligan to see if it's still relevant to keep it banned. I mean keep anything banned or ban anything you know we want to yeah this deck, <laughs> this deck beat uh arc like pretty easily there so which was pretty sweet I, uh, like i really like chalice right now and that's why i like that other uh mono white hate deck that we played um and that's why i want to try out hate bears tonight so as long as i can keep up with the uh um, dredge as well that's gonna be the biggest thing if i can't keep up with dredge then i don't think it matters so <laughs>
Yeah, I mean, Dredge is still the second most popular deck right now, is it not? You know, Phoenix is way up there, and then it's followed right by Dredge. But I don't know. I'm honestly fine with both decks. So this hand's a little awkward. We've got a turn two Chalice, but our Temple's not really doing too much. We're going to keep this. Um, it would be much more preferable if we were on the play, but we got a turn two Chalice and a Temple. So if we can draw an Eldrazi piece, that would be pretty sweet. Let's ship it back. Planes. All of Omens. Well, maybe we will get our Tron lands the easy way and just draw them. Arbiter. Looks like we're going to get Ghost Quartered. Unfortunate there. Ship it back. If we can get to another land, we can cast the Ballista for two and take out the Arbiter. Ooh, are they going to flicker our Chalice? Nope, they're just going to go for the draw. Okay. So let's run out the Ballista on one here. That way we can block the Arbiter and shoot the Flicker Wisp. What's up, Gorbatron? Thanks for joining, man. So our all our all his does are pretty awkward because they're on the deck that we're gonna be playing next, or a version of it. There goes Ballista. We knew you well. one mana off of being able to drop this Endbringer. Um, awkward part though is that they should be they're gonna they can tech edge our temple on their turn which would be pretty bad for us so I think we have to ghost quarter their tech edge now and then pass it over to them. Holy crap, Godrys. You finally updated your Warframe account and you actually logged on there. I don't think we've seen you on there for like ages. By the way, we're on Division 2 right now if you want to join us for that. I don't know if we make it past this here. there's anything we can even draw to stay alive here and that's definitely not going to be it so let's go ahead and concede so that was a little rough 
Uh, I want to bring in the warping whales and the spatial contortions here. Um, the ratchet bombs should also be pretty sweet. Spell sky should be pretty useful. Again, stopping them from any of their shenanigans. I want to bring a crucible as well uh, because they're going to be on that game plan quite a bit to just kind of lock us out of the game. I'm going to take out the Allah's Dust, not that great in this matchup, Ulamog and Karn because they're going to be really hard to cast. Um, after that, we got to cut four more cards. I'm not a, like, I want to keep in the Ballistas because they're solid against a good portion of their deck. I'm not a, I'm not sure about these chalices here uh, because they are also a uh, they should be a chalice deck as well. So I'm thinking we just want to cut the chalices. That is not the wrong Emerald. That is the Emerald this person ran. So unless the deck was registered improperly or uploaded improperly, um, that is what they're running. So pretty interesting. Um, I do think I just want to play another land, and I'm cut a Simeon Spirit Guide, just because they're on the landy plan quite a bit, and I want to be able to drop, get as many land drops as possible here. So let's go ahead and run this. Alright, not bad. Not bad. I think we can keep this. Temple with uh, some expo maps here. I don't know, man. I love 15-drop Emrakul. If we're casting them, I am on board. Opponent Mulligan down. Let's drop the mine. I think I'd just rather get another land going rather than dropping the Reshaper. So I'm just going to pass it over. Especially if they drop an Arbiter. All right, they're going to go Displacer. That's fine. We'll crack this. And I think we're actually just going to fetch up another Temple. It gives a higher value if we get Land Deed. So we can't be cut off as badly. Let's see what they're working with. All right, Path... Arbiter and Blade Splicer. We are fine with all of that except that path. Now that is going to put us in a bit of a tough spot here because we are going to get Leonid and Ghost Quartered on their turn. Um, but that's fine. We'll hit our temple. You know what? We're gonna run it right back on them. And hit their temple. And we're gonna run out our matter reshaper. Spicer's coming down. Okay. We're going to be able to fetch up for our Endbringer. So we'll just pass this over. Uh, fetch up the Tron piece here to finish things off. No, that's a ghost quarter. That's going to be rough. Because they got the ghost quarter here, we're probably just going to fetch up a temple.
opponent's thinking. How is that? I might be blinking right now. Blink the Blade Spicer while we're tapped out. Um, that way they have two first strikers, but who knows. I guess alternatively we could grab the Ghost Quarter and if they tap out, we can Ghost Quarter um, them to prevent them from being able to blink things anymore. But that seems like a bit more of a stretch, so let's just grab the Temple. Ooh, do they want to Ghost Quarter us on upkeep? That would be pretty solid of them. Uh, draw. If they ghost quarter us right now, it puts us in a pretty annoying spot. Oh, no, they don't. Okay. Hmm. We can run out Smasher and still be able to pay for ghost quarter, but Smasher's not going to do too much. They can... They'll be able to first strike everything down. Endbringer means we're giving up a land, but if they want to give up a land and prevent their ability to blink, that's going to be fine, I think. Uh, Endbringer should be able to give us just a ton of value. And they're going to have to hold up three mana to prevent any crazy things from happening for a good bit. Ooh, Resto, that's going to be painful. Mm -mm -mm. They have quite the board. Tough spot, I think. They're gonna be able to outvalue us pretty soon. We get some awkward dynamic with the wanting to shoot the splicer and them. We have to wait like a full turn, make them burn mana on it, and then we'll do it the following turn. Well, they're doing it right now, okay. That's fine. Because if they do it now, we can just shoot down the blade splicer. That's gone. Um, let's run out the Smasher. Who's all playing the division? Um, myself, Tyler, Kyle, Blake, Aaron, Nate. We got a good chunk of us on there. Swings are still pretty awkward for us. I am really enjoying the Division 2 right now. It's a lot of fun. Um, you know, pretty, pretty solid game, I gotta say. I think they did a lot of corrections from the first one. Um, so. I'm taking the hit here because I think I just want to draw a card um, to see if we can get out from under this. Um, a ratchet bomb were really nice. That way we can take care of all the golems. Um, pretty soon, next turn we're just going to drop this tomb. They got that ghost quarter still. And I wanted to say they're going to blow it on one of these things. But it doesn't seem like they're doing that. They're blinking our thought not. Okay. So we'll have them draw the card first. And then we'll exile something. Looks like they got vile and arbiter. Let's take out the arbiter. See if we can bait them into getting us. That's a tower, that's pretty sweet. Ooh, there's a ratchet bomb. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. So we'll run out the tower. Get them to get rid of what we have going on here. 
And we can just go ahead and I think I'm gonna pop this right now. Get rid of all that nonsense. Let's go to combat. We will do the good old smash here. Expedition map onto the battlefield. Let's draw a card. You get all the power in the world. Okay. And we will pass it over. They're gonna blink our end bringer, sure. Ooh, a little pithing needle, our Endbringer. I don't think that's that big of a deal. We're just going to be crashing here. Like, they've got an Aether Vial in hand. They can block two things and blink one other thing. If that's the route they want to go. We're going to throw out our tomb here. search up anything with the expedition map. I think we're okay for now. Another Endbringer, not bad. Alright, well, let's crash in. to blink their displacer. Take five. Sure. We'll run that out and we will run out our Endbringer. And we'll pass it over. some life. Another temple. Alright, well let's crash in and see what they got for us. Cool. Gap there. Alright, well, I was pretty happy with that plan, so let's just run it back. But yeah, the uh, Warframe came out with a great uh, update. They were, you know, doing the intro to their Melee 3.0. So that's been a lot of fun playing around with that. Kyle's been going pretty crazy with it. And then Division's been on a blast. So highly recommend. Well, we've got Tron online. 
Um, I think that's fine. We'll keep it. It's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of awkward. Well, at least we got the Ballista, which is a good payoff for us. hit the power plant we've got a backup so we're just going to go for the mine force them to deal with it cool play that one and we're just going to run out the map and we'll pass it over Not even gonna pop it. Run that out. Drop a smasher. Run this matter reshaper out. Some art smashing. Pithing needle and three lands, folks. I better draw something super relevant right now. Nope. We got there. We got there, folks. This hand is pretty sweet in a lot of different ways, uh, depending on what they get going on. We can either run out the turn one chalice, um, not preferable because we want to get that expedition map out, but we have the option to do it. If it's going to shut them out of the game, we might do it. Hmm, run dredge. Mm-mm-mm. Dredge, dredge, dredge. Well, with dredge, one is pretty important. Shuts off their shriek horns and their faithless lootings. Two is also really important because of their um, life of the loam plans. But I think with what our hand's shaping up to be, we got to get this map out because we need to form Tron. Anything super relevant. There's three lands and a cathartic. It's a faithless. Mm -hmm. It was a faithless looting. It's 
tank weed and an amalgam. Well, we've got worm coil, so that's really good. I think right now our best bet is to just chalice on one to shut off all those faithless lootings in the graveyard. And then we'll pass this over. Not ideal for us, but we'd rather slow them down because we're going to win the inevitable here with our expedition map. Pretty strong treasure effects from them. of enemies coming back. All is dust. Alright, so if we don't see a can flag in the graveyard, I'm not saying that it can't flip one. We're at 14, so blood gas can be held off as well. Um, we can always dust them next turn. So I think right now what we just want to do is fetch up our mine. Run out the mine. And we're actually going to Simeon Spirit Guide and drop this Matter Reshaper. Just to soak up a little bit more damage. And then next turn we can wipe their board um, or drop the worm coil here, depending on what they have going on. Another creeping shell is not great for us. Plus it's at 11, luckily. Still out of range of that blood gas having haste. good for us because it looks like our best bet is to just wipe the field here because um, then they can blood gas back hit us for four and we'll still be alive because if we drop the worm coil block that soaks up that damage still take five that'd be bad so yeah let's let's all is dust Well, that's a creeping chill and another blood gas. So that is the game there. So I want to bring in our graveyard hate and Ugin. Mm -mm -mm. Chalices. Interesting in this matchup. Shutting off Faithless and Shriekhorn is pretty solid. I think I'm good to cut the Ulamog. Endbringers. Karn's a little bit slower. And then I think two Ballistas. Keep the Chalices because we're on the play. Anything else you guys are seeing that you guys want to bring in or take out? Um, All 
right, I'm just gonna run it then. Mm -mm -mm. He's not doing a ton. I think we're good to ship this one actually. I feel like this hand's got more potential. You can explode onto the field a little bit more. So let's keep this one. Send that to the bottom here. So that last time was going to form Tron, but uh, like we weren't going to do anything with it. And I think as a result, we would just fall behind the dredge and die. Hmm. So, at the very least, we're going to run a Thought Knot out next turn. No dredgers in the graveyard, which makes me happy. See what they got going on. Lightning axe? Sure is. And the creeping shoulders. Well, if we take their stinkweed and their cathartic gets much worse. So let's go that route. Because Smash is going to be hard for them to Lightning Axe anyway. They're going to have to discard two cards, and they're, if they're going to cathartic this turn, try to get some stuff going. the field with all his dust. Got cathartic and lightning axe in hand. Or we can smash or hit them down to 14. And then they hit us down. Playoff smash means it's going to get lightning axe as well. But they'd have to commit all but one card in their hand to it. Or we just drop smasher and hold up a block. Block the Amalgam, they hit us, hit us with the two blood gas. All of those options don't seem great. Hmm. Let's run out the Smasher. And we're just going to hold it back. If they want a Lightning Axe, and commit three cards to that. I don't like our plan no matter what. I feel like we need to get a worm coil here to even get to stay in this game. Two chills, that's rough. <laughs> oh my gosh, our opponent's so good at this. So I 
I think we're dead because of the couldn't flag in the graveyard here. And they can haste us away. Yep, that's game. Well, that was no good. This was the matchup that I was worried about, that if we didn't uh, do well against it, well, we have more games than just one here to see if it's worthwhile. You know what we should do, Reese? We should do one of those gauntlets that me and you do to play test decks on the stream one of these days. That way I can just run through a whole slew of games against a whole bunch of decks that we actually want to um, play against for the meta instead of hitting random decks that uh, we haven't seen how they will do. That'd be a lot of fun. Alrighty, this hand has a turn one chalice, and we're on the draw. I think we're going to keep it. Ooh, they are doing temple stuff too. It's unfortunate because that means chalice is really bad. Oh, we're still going to do it though. Just in case they have an expedition map. Oh no, they're black white taxes. Strangler. That's a mine, we'll pass it over. We'll take some beats. Ooh, that's a bitter blossom. Well, there goes our expedition map. <laughs> uh, unfortunate. That would be so sad. Yeah, they are. They're going to take our Smasher? Oh man, our opponent's so good. They're better at playing Eldrazi's than we are. Alright, well we need to rip another Temple or the other Tron piece right now. That is not it. Chalice them for two. Pass it over. Well, we've got to hit the land next turn, otherwise we're dead. Because we're taking eight this turn. Ooh, I don't know this. I think they got us now. I think they got us now. So even with that, uh, because they played another Thought Knot, we could play Endbringer, block one, and we can't tap to make the other ones die or anything like that, so we are dead. Let's go ahead and concede. Alright, so I'm going to take out these Chalices and take out these All is Dust. I'm going to bring in the Ratchet Bombs. And then I want to bring in the Contortion as well. Yeah, Black White Eldrazi mid range. Could bring in Spell Skite and maybe Crucible. Not particularly excited about anything else that we could be bringing in. We could bring in Warping Whale. There's a chance those are just going to miss, so. I think we'll try it as is here. I 
Temple's pretty good. Two Tron pieces into double thought knot. So let's keep this. We'll run out the temple just in the case that we draw another temple. We can drop a turn two thought knot. Nope. Ship that over. We're gonna have turn four Tron, which will be pretty cool. Strangle. Thoughtsies. Well, that's fine. We've got duplicate thought knots. on lands <sighs> if we take thought not they won't be able to take our ballista if we don't take stony though ballista is useless anyway um, so it's a gamble either way well it's a gamble if we don't take the thought not we're gonna lose our ballista um, but we'll be able to expedition map and get another land and just be able to go that route yeah, let's take the stony. Seems like the safest decision here. Um, and if they do thought not, they thought not, so. Cool. All right, so let's run out that. Drop our ballista for all the mana. And we'll hit them for four. Right, they had another land. But still shut off on their titles. Thought not's just gonna hit our map, which is fine. Because we are good at this game, we draw another Ballista. And that's the game. We're so lucky. Okay. Let's run it again. Land sequencing is always interesting in these kinds. Okay. So if we run out of temple, we have uh, the chance of hitting another temple and hitting the turn two thought not but i think the idea of getting out our end bringer is just too good so we're just gonna play our uh, tron piece and run out of uh, expedition map and pass it over bitter blossom we will run this out and then run out a ratchet bomb Do they have a thought not? Ooh, nope, they have a thought seize though. What do they want to take? Goodbye, Endbringer. Right now, I'm actually okay with leaving the Ratchet Bomb at zero um, for the tokens. Oh yeah, they got Lingering Souls as well, so definitely. 
Um, I think our best bet here is just to take their Thought Knot. Their Strangler can't kill our Thought Knot, and Sculler's fine because um, they'd have to have an odd decision between taking the Ballista or the Thought Knot. So let's do that. as well for the bitter blossom it really lets them just get out of control with those lingering souls though yeah i think we're fine to just sit here with that i do think we're gonna crack this map though and we're actually gonna grab this tomb of the spirit dragon i don't think they have a good way to deal with that and Take the strangler. So we could crack the Ratchet Bomb here, because then we'll be able to either kill Liliana, or we would be able to um, get the Ballista and take it out. Uh, uh, block, they'll block with the Tide Hollow. Um, or we just go with the Swing, they Chump Block with the Fairy Rogue. Mm -mm -mm. I think we take it this turn. We're okay with discarding a card. Ooh, Contortion is pretty sweet. For one, we will just swing at them. We'll go down to six. They can generate some tokens if they want with lingering souls. We're gonna crack it. Uh, ratchet bomb to get rid of all of them, so we don't really care. That's what they want to do. Because they don't have enough mana to activate that unless they got another land, so. And they'll take the hit if they want to hit this. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, we're gonna crack this now. Oh my gosh. I was supposed to shoot first. Oh my gosh, I'm so sad with my life. That, that cost us the game. Oh, 
Oh my gosh, I was supposed to shoot first. Ah. Now our thought not could die. I guess we're just lucky. <laughs> we're just really lucky. Wow. Okay, so we can hit this. Uh, hit their land, swing with Thought Knot. Wow, we got saved there by the Ulamog. That was such a that was such a punt because we should have we should have shot <sighs> with Ballista, taking out some the shoot two of them at Liana, and then shot them. That was, that was bad. But, we got there. Oh man, oh man. Yeah, I feel like I'm gonna, I might be on a chalice deck for um, the open. So that'll be pretty fun. See how lucky I can get with uh, just getting all the matchups. Not sold on the Valakut deck. I tried the um, the Just Guy Nahiri deck again last night, and that was fine. Uh, you know, some match. If I don't get all five creature matchups again, I don't just stomp the you know stomp everyone. But it was it was pretty good. God Reese, what are you thinking about playing for uh, next week? Have you settled on a deck yet? Okay, pretty sweet. We're gonna form Tron and get some sweet cards to play. So, we'll do that. All right, let's see what they wanna take from us. Well, we'll ship it. If they are on black, um, green rock, a chalice on two will be pretty devastating for them. And if they're just on an obscure handle like shadow or something. Ooh, they're on Abzan. Okay. Let's form Tron. Okay, so we can run Ch Chalice on one. Should be pretty good against Abzan, hitting their paths as their main removal. So we can go like, run out Basilisk Collar, run out Chalice on one, and run out Matter Reshaper, and next turn play Endbringer. Yeah, but I think they play less Assassin's Trophy than Paths, right? Like, they should be playing a full set of Paths, and then there should be some number of more Inquisitions and Thought Seizes in their deck, where if it's Trophy, I think they just play that maybe as, like, what, a one of in the main, two of? Or am I wrong and there's even more of those? 
than I'm thinking, and it would have been more worthwhile to get the two so we can uh, shut off the, the scavenging oozes, the goifs. Okay, that's a Kaya. This card's been getting a lot of play, I tell you what. It's pretty sweet, I like the card, so I'm happy that it is getting play. Yeah, that was... Mm -mm -mm. I think we will equip. I misclicked the mana. The two mana was supposed to go for this mana reshaper and then the equip, so luckily we aren't getting punished too badly. Let's take out the Kaya. And we'll just pass it to them. We will draw a card. Lingering souls, okay. Let's run out of thought. Oh, let's see what else they got going on. Another lingering souls, an ooze, and a Liliana. Lingering souls is gonna be the one that clogs our board up the most. The ooze and the Liliana we can just ship away with our all is dust. I'm gonna get rid of the lingering souls. That way they only have the other one in their graveyard that they can pick up. We'll run out the map, equip on the reshaper, and then we'll swing in. Catch up with our map. We'll grab a Seagate wreckage. Equip there. And we'll pass it over. Ooh, they're gonna bail. How rude. quarter we will all is dust draw a card and run out of reshaper Or dang tiny and a goy. Okay. Big ol' ballista's pretty sweet with us. And we'll leave two mana for our ballista. Shoot one on the cliff, and that's game. 
Oh yeah. All right, so Relic's pretty good here. The Ratchet Bomb seems pretty solid here. Um, about 100% of the Contortions. Um, Lugan seems pretty solid, though, so I want to bring those in. I'm not a, really sure if we want to bring the Chalices in, in this matchup on the draw. Um, maybe it's better on the play here. They, they could be bringing in a lot of stuff. They have a, they have a really diverse set of cards for chalice so it's uh, if it's much harder for it to be useful so i think i'm gonna take them out maybe if we can have it in another place so we can sneak it in on turn one that's fine to hit like an inquisition um in thought seizes but on the draw it just doesn't seem as worthwhile um pithing needle for their planeswalkers isn't doesn't seem like a bad plan here Mm -mm -mm. Is it enough though? It's that, or we can also hit their man lands. That seems versatile enough, right? And are, do we have any interest in the Crucible plan? I feel like the Crucible plan would be worthwhile here. They're going to be assassins trophying us, and we could do some ghost quarter shenanigans on them. They're on a three-color deck. Yeah, that seems worthwhile. Why don't we trim two spirit guides for that? So what do you guys think about the deck so far? I've, seems seems pretty good, right? We're getting some pretty sweet draws, getting saved by our top decks quite a bit. <laughs> um, we've got two Tron pieces here. Um, so with some pretty sweet cards we can hit off of it if we form Tron or just hit a temple. So let's see what we got. That Ratchet Bomb is gone. Alrighty, really need to hit that tower. Come on, baby. Okay. Looking rough. Oh. Okay. That's fine. We got a matter reshaper we can play. bad. Let's get a thought knot out there. Mm -mm -mm. Let's hit a Liliana. Because worst case scenario, they path us. That's fine. We'll take the land. They don't have the land. They don't have any white sources right now, though. So, let's see. Flyer. So we can drop Smasher for sure, which is sweet. And if we hit Tron, whew, our hand goes crazy. Okay, so none of that. We'll want to drop. Smasher here, because Ballista is not that great. Since their Grim Flayers are 4-4s four now. Okay, 
Ugin's pretty sweet. Once again, we still need to hit a Tron piece here. And the last one, another lane itself, though, would be good. So let's just ship it back. Our opponent said uh, they promised the uh, wind counter, and I got, I don't trust it, so I don't know about that. They could uh, blow us out with a mana tithe. We have been known to do that to our opponents, so we need none of that happening. <laughs> cards and gain some life. Why not? Sweet. With that, we well all is dust. Cause we're rude. And we'll wipe their board. And we'll smash them for five. <laughs> GG's opponent. Okay. That was a pretty quick league, I have to say. Went 4-1. Not bad. I'm going to stop the recording. Why don't we... Uh...